Welcome to Orange Weekly, presented by Krause Health. Alongside Mike Waters, I'm Brent Axe. Coming up, we'll hear from our colleague Mike Curtis on the Syracuse women's basketball team. They share a, a strange partnership with the men and starting slow as of late. And what do the NCAA tournament prospects for Coach Q squad look like? We'll hear from Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim during Syracuse sound bites as well. But Mike, as noted there, both the men's and the women's team not coming out of the gate strong as of late. Those first halves have been a struggle for Syracuse. Uh, five of their last seven games, they've trailed at halftime. Now, Notre Dame, they came back and won. And even though NC State put up 47 points and a half and uh, some other uh, slow starts for the Orange, they, they actually were four and three in that stretch where they trailed at halftime in those seven games. That being said, uh, the Duke game really kind of brought it to the forefront of what can happen when you do start slow. They couldn't crawl out of that hole. What is it, Mike? Is it the defense, or, or what do you see in there? Well, after I completely botched our first take on this Orange Weekly brand, I don't know if I'm the right person to provide an answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's hard to put your, uh, your, your finger on what's going on with Syracuse. You know, is it a lack of intensity, especially on defense? You know, I kind of lean that way. You know, when you fall behind, the other team's outscoring you. Um, you know, are, are they just – lacking that intensity that you usually need on defense, especially on offense. Sometimes I think it's a little bit of a, of a lack of focus, like, you know, where you're moving the ball, are you running your offense? Are you taking good, you know, high percentage shots? I tell you what, it, it, you might be able to come from behind at home against NC state and Notre Dame, but you are not coming from behind on the road against a good team like Duke. And you certainly aren't going to be able to do it on Saturday against Georgia tech. So whatever the problem is, Syracuse players and coaches need to address it because you don't want to fall behind against the Yellow Jackets. Well, and there is a pattern there, Mike, and Georgia Tech could fit this pattern in that teams go to the big man early. Notre Dame did it. Duke did it. And then Georgia Tech might do it. And when the defense inevitably has to shift and cover the big man down low, three-point shooters go wild here. So Syracuse is at a point where maybe their best defense is just going to be offense at this point. Like you just kind of have to take the blow defensively because you don't have a lot in the paint with God bless Marek Dolja and everything he's done, but it's a matchup issue at times. And it's going to be again with uh, Moses Wright for Georgia tech, as we'll discuss here. So that being said, when you have Alan Griffin and Quincy Garrier struggling offensively, you know, you're really putting yourself behind the eight ball. Yeah. And, and Alan and Quincy have both had their struggles of late uh, both at George uh, at the Duke on Monday after the game, Jim Beheim basically called them out and said that they were more concerned about scoring than playing defense, which is not a good thing. And, you know, you know, Quincy has struggled against big guys. And when that game against Duke started and you saw that Duke had put Matthew Hurt on Marek Dolajai, and they were going to go with the seven foot freshman Mark Williams on Quincy. And you knew that was going to be a problem unless Quincy could step away from the basket and make something from the outside. But as he continued to go down low, you know, that's a five inch differential between Quincy and Williams. And, it, he, you know, to say that he struggled to score inside is, is an understatement. And, and it's totally understandable too. You're asking a guy to score over a seven footer when he's six foot seven, um, you know, so they got to figure out, you know, how Georgia Tech's going to defend them. Alan Griffin is another thing entirely. He lets his offense affect him on the other end of the floor. If he's going good offensively, you're going to see Alan Griffin engaged, playing well uh, on defense. He's out on shooters. He's coming back to help. He's just more active. When he's struggling on offense, it does have a tendency to affect him on the defensive end. He, it's not that he stops playing or not hustles. It, I, I notice a lack of focus. Uh, he's a little bit out of position. He's not where he should be, but you know, that said, while Jim called Quincy and Allen out on their defense, that was a group effort. It was. And, it and Jim can say it's not the guard's fault. Listen, you and I both saw the shot chart after that game. Duke made nine three-pointers from above the foul line, and many of them were at the very top of the key. And I'm sorry, they're not all Allen and Quincy's fault. They're just not. Uh, this is a team uh, lack of effort. and It's really not a lack of effort. I just think it's a team-wide struggle defensively. It starts with the fact that you have a 200 pound forward playing center full time with Barama Sidibe out. You got to go with Marek Dolajai in there. The forwards are scrambling all over the place. And in part, because let's be honest, Joe Girard and Buddy Beheim together are not the most athletic and agile guards that Syracuse has ever put out front. It's just a fact. 
So, you know, you're asking a lot of guys to do a lot of different things, and I don't think some of them are capable of doing it. Yeah, I saw this stat this week, Mike. So you look at three of Syracuse's best recent teams, 2013, 2016, 2018. All top 20 teams in Ken Pomeroy in defensive efficiency. This team's 89th in the country right now, which just goes to show you. Georgia Tech is up next. They've got a great backcourt. They've got a terrific guy inside. I love watching Moses Wright. And yeah, Mike, too. The, the X factor with Georgia Tech, not only are they at home, which you know has been a, a struggle for Syracuse to go on the road. This is an experienced team. A lot of seniors and juniors out there, and they're trying to make an NCAA tournament charge themselves. Yeah, they're looking to make the tournament for the first time since 2010. Wow. Which is just amazing to think that Georgia it Tech is. hasn't made the tournament uh, in, in 10, 11 years now. So, but with Moses Wright, a senior, Jose Alvarado, a senior, Bubba Parham, I think he's a senior, mm -hmm. uh, Michael DeVoe, a junior who's played a, a lot. I mean, they is have experience. I, I, I'm like you. I love their backcourt, uh, Alvarado and, and DeVoe together. Uh, there's something like nine and O oh, or nine and one when those two guys are both in double figures, you, you know, so good luck doing that because, you know, they, they, they generally are in double figures. They're, they're very good. So, and the, the right's going to be a problem for Syracuse. They've had problem with big men all year long. You know, he's fifth in the conference in scoring. I think he's like eighth in rebounding. He's agile. He's athletic. He can come to the high post. They can run him down low. They have to stop right from, from really killing him inside. And then it's just going to be, you know, the job of the guards to make sure that they know where DeVoe, Alvarado, and Parham are and, and make sure they don't get open looks. You're going to give up some threes, but you have to make sure that they're going to be at least tough and defended. I'm going to go back to what I said a moment ago, Mike. I, I just think at this point, the best defense for this team is offense. They just need Gerard to shoot threes. They need Allen to get back on track. Buddy's been terrific offensively the past couple of games, 29 and 21 respectively. That's how Syracuse is going to make a run here. I mean, that's that's going to be it. So we'll see if they can do it against the Yellow Jackets. It's a noon tip-off on Saturday. Mike, thanks as always, my friend. We'll hear from Mike Curtis coming up shortly. But right now, let's hear from the head coach. It's time for Syracuse Sound Blades. In the first half, we didn't guard the guards. I think in the second half we guard them, and they made four three. They they each made four and three in the first half, and one didn't make any threes in the second half, and the other one made one. And somebody just said in the in the locker room, I didn't even talk about who, but one of the starters said, "Well, no, I didn't play defense in the first half." Well, at this stage of the season, um, I don't know that that's something I can't understand, um, but we didn't. We didn't cover shooters. Well, Mike, as Mike Waters and I talked about a couple of minutes ago, the men's team and the women's team share a, a unique partnership right now, and that is they are coming out of the gate slow. With the men's team, it's defense. What have you seen from the women's team and why they seem to struggle in the first half? Coach Q um, had a presser yesterday, and he basically attributed the slow starts to um, their energy and effort, their effort on the defensive end and their energy pretty much on the offensive end. Um, typically when they come out, they try to get their post player and Camilla Cardoso established. Um, if she gets doubled, she kicks it out to open shooters. Um, but sometimes it looks like they have a little bit of confusion on what they want to do. Maybe they want to get Tiana involved early, um, have her hitting shots, but they they typically play well at home. They're seven and zero at home this year. And four of their last six have been on the road. Maybe that's got something to do with it. Uh, five of their last six games, they've trailed at halftime as well. So we'll see if uh, uh, things change for the Orange going forward here down the stretch. Now, the men's team is fighting for their very tournament lives. The women's team seems to be in. Uh, Charlie Cream, who's kind of the Joe Lenardi of, of women's basketball, has them slotted in. But if they do win that first round matchup, there's uh, there's an 800 pound gorilla waiting to uh, to face the Orange in the next round. Yeah, right now they're slated as the eighth seed in Region 1 um, going against Iowa State. If they win that matchup, they'll be headed towards a matchup with UConn. Mm. And that they typically don't have a good history going against that team. Um, they lost against them in 2016 in the national championship with Brianna Stewart. So they, they'll have their hands full, but they have to get through these last two games. Um, they play, they have a big matchup in NC State on Sunday. Um, so that, that'll be a big test. Um, followed by next week's ACC tournament. We'll see how that unfolds. And then you have the NCAA tournament next month. 
And to be fair, there's probably not a lot of teams that have a good record against UConn in history. So we'll give Coach Q and the squad that. Mike, thank you. Thanks to Mike Waters for joining us as well. Thanks for watching Orange Weekly presented by Krause Health. We'll talk to you next time.